I like to be on your level. <laughs> I'm not exalted. Jesus exalted, so um, I just kind of feel more comfortable down here. If it's okay, if you don't mind, you guys, you're all right. Is that okay? Do I have your permission to stand down here? <laughs> Y'all are great. How many of folks, you folks, um, have uh, met me before? You've seen me before? Raise your hands. You know who I am. Only a handful. Oh, okay, awesome. I have been here. It's been, a, it's been a few years now. It's been a while since I've, I've been here, but um, I love coming to be with you guys. And um, I pastored in Simcoe, for those that don't know. Again, my name's Darren West. This is my beautiful wife, Kiersey, who, who uh, sang a little while ago. And uh, we pastored, um, used to be Simcoe Full Gospel, and now it's Real Life Church uh, in Simcoe for nine years. Before that, we were in Ottawa, in our nation's capital. My wife served uh, in the worship and um, creative arts department as a pastor there, and I painted houses. Isn't that awesome? Exciting. I love the transformations, like the transformation that we get when Jesus, when we meet Jesus. Amen. Um, before that, we were in Thunder Bay, pastored there as an associate and senior pastor in Thunder Bay five years there. And before that, we were in Vancouver. So we've been all over Canada, <laughs> which has been great. So we get to see the uh, beautiful nation that we live in. And it is a beautiful nation. Amen. Um, this morning, I, I want to uh, bring a, a, I would say, a, a, I don't want to say simple, but I want to bring just a, a refreshing our minds of who we are uh, as believers you know, one of the most profound statements that we find in Scripture, and it's one of the greatest invitations uh, that we can have, is Jesus says, follow me. Um, is there any, should I ask before I get started, is there any, um, are there any tradespeople in the room? Mechanics, plumbers, electricians? We've got a few, eh? All right, raise your hand, don't be shy. Okay, so you, you've gone through an apprenticeship, because if, you, if you're a mechanic or an electrician, plumber, you've apprenticed under somebody, right? You've done some schooling too, but you had an apprentice. Were they any good? Nod your head if they were the good mentors that you had that trained you, yeah. They, they showed you not only um, what to do, but they showed you how to do it, right? They, that, I mean, I'm hoping, otherwise you probably aren't a very good tradesperson, but... Um, you know, it, I want to kind of interject that thought for you. because I mean, I think everybody in this room understands what a tradesperson is when, you, when I say that. Unfortunately, I mean, hey, if you're young here and you're looking for a, a career, go into the trades. Because right now there's a shortage of tradespeople. And uh, it's also, you know, you can make a pretty good living uh, being, being a tradesperson. But I want you to just kind of think of that for a second, you know, in, in, in context to maybe our um, day and our culture. Uh, one of the things that's really pro profound, uh, if you know um, a little bit about, um, uh, you know, the Hebrew culture and it being an Israelite at the time of Jesus when he walked the earth, to be called by a rabbi was a big deal. <laughs> I mean, these are the guys that were called, think about, you know, the disciples that were called fishermen and tax collector, um, you know, you, you realize that these guys didn't necessarily make the cut. That's just the reality that if they're doing their father's trade or business, um, they didn't make the cut because any young Hebrew boy, uh, it would be like being a rock star to be a disciple or a follower of a rabbi. To get called by a rabbi is a big deal. It was a big deal at that time. And so if you think about that for a second and you understand, um, you know, the weight of that, to be called by Jesus is one of the most amazing calls that you can have. <laughs> there is nothing greater. To be invited to come and follow Jesus is an absolutely amazing thing. And I don't want that to be lost in, in this, you know, in, in, in kind of... Um, how we per, um, perceive ourselves as Christians, because we are first and foremost followers. I, I was raised in a, in a generation, and, and, um, and I'm not knocking this in a way, but I've, I've been kind of contemplative about this in my own life. I was 
trained in ministry, trained as a pastor in the 90s, it's going way back, so you can kind of figure out how old I am. But uh, through the 90s and early 2000s, when they're in the church, in Christendom, at least in North America, there's a big push on leadership, 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 leadership. Every conference I went to was leadership, leadership, leadership. And I understand the concept of the pastor while you are in a, in a place of leadership. But you know, the interesting thing, if you read scripture and you read Jesus uh, mandate for us, I don't actually find that anywhere. <laughs> but I do find a lot about following. I believe we need more conferences, <laughs> more sermons on followership than leadership. Because I can tell you this, you'll never be a great leader until you become a great follower. Because the one that we are following sets the example. Jesus himself was a great follower. What? What do you mean? He was God, God man. But yet, read in the Bible. He says, I don't do anything <laughs> unless I see my father doing it. He was following. We too, as believers, our highest calling is to be a follower. Amen? Unfortunately, in our, in our context of church culture today, and and again, I got to be careful because I don't want to. I don't want to sound uh, like a negative Nelly here. But in our church culture, oftentimes, you know, and especially in North America, and I don't want to uh, pick on any, you know, other, any other um, country other than our own. I, we see a lot uh, magnified in individualism, um, a lot of self promotion, and I believe that you know we've missed the mark in that where we need as a church to repent. You know, we're not here to self-exalt. We're here to exalt the name of Jesus. We're not here to perform for others. <laughs> we're here to truly come in a humble attitude to lay low and understand that when we're weak, he's strong. His power is perfected in what? Weakness. Every one of us here, myself included, I'm a weak vessel. <laughs> I'm a flawed human being. My feet touch the earth. But I'm following one who was a champion. I'm following one who is an overcomer. I'm following one who has established me in perfect peace. I'm following one who has established me in resurrection life and power. It's all about him, amen? You know, a little deviation, a little historical lesson of um, if you've studied history and you study the early church and through the centuries, you realize that we've deviated quite a lot. <laughs> we've deviated quite a lot, even about in our gathering times. We kind of made our gathering times really complicated. You know, a simple church, I would say, is probably the phrase you could use for the early church. They gathered in homes, they gathered in places wherever they could. Many were under persecution, so they had to go in places where they wouldn't be seen. We have the luxury of beautiful buildings and the early church didn't have that. But what they had in common was the understanding that we need to come together for the encouragement, the edification of one another by the Holy Spirit. We come, why? We come to gather in the presence of Jesus. Let us not forget that. That when you have his presence, you have everything. You see, as a follower, we're not... And don't hate me if you have a footprints poster on your wall. But we're not walking and trying to find Jesus' footprints. <laughs> We actually have the presence of Jesus with us always by his spirit. I'm not looking to follow footprints, but I am looking to see where he's working so that I can join in. Amen? <laughs> Let me read you a portion of scripture. And, and I'm a little bit old school, and man, you might find me weird, but can we stand together and just honor the Lord as the word is read?
In some church traditions, this is, this is normal. Um, how many, uh, let me ask you a question. How many people that have been raised Baptist are here? Any Baptists? Got a few. Catholics. I met a Catholic this morning. Anglicans. United. Methodist. Oh, wow. Cool. Got a smorgasbord this morning. So in some traditions, this is, this is very much common, and I believe it is honoring to the Lord that we honor Him as we re- read the Word. In Mark chapter 10, it's a lengthy passage, so that's why I ask you to stand so you don't fall asleep. So starting at verse 17, And as he was setting out on his journey, a man ran up and knelt before him and asked him, Good teacher, what must I do to inherit eternal life? And Jesus said to him, Why do you call me good? No one is good except God alone. You know the commandments. Do not murder. Do not commit adultery. Do not steal. Do not bear false witness. Do not defraud. Honor your father and mother. And he said to him, Teacher, all these things I have kept from my youth. And Jesus looking at him. Catch that. Looking at him. The gaze of Jesus. Can you only imagine? As as the Lord Jesus Christ looked at him. And he loved him. I love that part. He looked at him and he loved him him and said to him you lack one thing go and sell all that you have and give to the poor and you will have treasure in heaven and come follow me disheartened disheartened by the saying he went away sorrowful for he had great possessions and Jesus looked around and he said to his disciples his apprentices. <laughs> I can interject that in there for this morning's message. How difficult it will be for those who have wealth to enter the kingdom of God. And the disciples were amazed at his words, but Jesus said to them again, Children, how difficult it is to enter the kingdom of God. How difficult it is. It's easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich person to enter the kingdom of God. And they were exceedingly astonished, and they said to him, Then who can be saved? And Jesus looked at them and said, With man it is impossible, but not with God. Hallelujah. Can I get a hallelujah for that one? (laughs) For all things are possible with God. And Peter began to say to him, See, we have left everything, and we have followed you. And Jesus said, Catch this, church. This is awesome. Truly, I say to you, there is no one who has left house or brothers or sisters or mother or father or children or lands for my sake and for the gospel who will not receive a hundredfold now in this time. Say this time. This time. Right now. This time. Houses and brothers and sisters and mothers and children and lands with persecutions and in the age to come eternal life. But many who are first will be last and the last first. You can be seated. As we read these words, as I read these words, it's just like the disciples who heard them for the first time. They may seem a bit difficult, especially that first part about forsaking all, giving it all up, especially if you got lots of stuff. It seems very difficult, but within this challenge to forsake all is the fact that this statement is the greatest invitation. It is an invitation, and there's a great reward that's attached to it. Now, I know in the past in my own life, I've turned down invitation. You ever turn down an invitation afterwards? You went, man, I wish I'd gone to that. You hear back, you go, oh, I missed out on that. It's nothing in comparison to Jesus' invitation to come follow me. There's no invitation that's greater or more rewarding than that invitation to follow Jesus. It might seem intense. (laughs) Is it intense sometimes to follow Jesus? Is it challenging sometimes? Come on, be honest, be real. It's challenging. It, It can be intense. Yet it is the most rewarding apprenticeship that you could ever be a part of. This life that we live as Christians is much more than just acquired knowledge about something or someone. (laughs) It's more than just right behavior. Amen? 
It's more than just a list or a set of rules that we're striving really hard to live out. It's actually what Jesus is trying to convey to this young, rich ruler. Even though the the young man gave this list of things that he was doing, thinking that I can, by my own merit, I can show you what I'm doing for you, for God. What I should be doing. Thinking that maybe this is what I need to do in order to be approved. To justify myself. To work out my own salvation. Jesus challenged this ruler in the area that meant most to him. He wanted to get to the heart. (laughs) You get to the heart, what's really in the heart. You discover what you really treasure. Amen? I mean, that's that's biblical. That's scriptural. (laughs) You'll find that treasure. Is Jesus that treasure of your heart? Jesus is looking for us individually and as the church to be a people where he is our sole treasure. We treasure him. Jesus wanted to see, will this young man cast away those things, toss them to the side, see them as less important, that Jesus is the most important person the most important one in my life. That challenge goes out to to us today, each one of us. This this life that we live as Christians, it is a walk. It's a walk where we do forsake all that the world has to offer. And as you know, the world has a lot of things to offer, doesn't it? No? Nobody said no, yeah. The world does have things to offer, doesn't it? Will we forsake all? Do we enter and we follow this one we call Lord, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ? He's got to be the treasure of our hearts. He's our leader. He's the one that is setting us in that place of where we're to, where we're to go. We're looking to him to set the way. Our job really is simple. Follow. Follow him. Follow his leading. And he's invited us into this. And it's an amazing thing. As I said before, great leaders are great followers. Each one of us in this room are leaders. We do have influence. You have influence. You have influence in your workplace. You have influence um, in, in your school, if you're in school, in your family. I think it was um, uh, John Maxwell. He's a leadership dude, right? Is that right? Is that the right name? John Maxwell? Yeah. I think it was he was, he kind of simplified leadership in the in that way of just simplifying it as influence. Really to be a leader is influencing others. And we have that ability to influence others in a good way and a bad way, right? But we don't want to make it about us. We make it about Jesus. There's a, there's a quote that I don't know if you guys got a chance to put it up there. It's cool if you didn't. Nah, don't worry about it. So have you ever heard of a, of a, a theologian by the name of Leonard, Leonard Sweet? Anybody heard that name, Leonard Sweet? Oh, okay. He's written a really good, brilliant book, um, Following the Way, the Truth, and the Life of Jesus. Uh, it's, it's a, I think it's actually the title is, is um, Following the Way, but um, that's the, the subtitle. He once said, it's, it's kind of a cool thing. If, if you don't know him, I'll just kind of set it up for, he's, a, he's kind of a artsy-fartsy kind of guy too, but a very poetic uh, kind of guy as he writes, and so... Uh, You'll get the point when you hear this quote. I I just really want to interject it because it's so beautiful. He said once, he said, we don't take Jesus into the world. Which is an interesting statement, is it? But he says, what we do as believers is we discern where he is dancing. And we join in on the dance. I love that. It's poetic. But what he's saying is we look and we discern, Jesus, what are you doing? on planet earth today because I want to be a part of it because I'm your disciple. (laughs) I'm following you. I'm an apprentice. You're showing me what to do and I want to join in on what you're doing. Isn't that really what Jesus did with his first disciples? (laughs) He took them along the way. (laughs) He taught them truth. He taught them the ways of the kingdom of God. He showed them what to do. He, he modeled it. He gave them all the, all the, the hows and the what's. This is This is what you do, and this is how you do it. Then what did he do? 
Go and do it. <laughs> he actually says, he, he doesn't say go and make a bunch of replicas of yourself and go and make big conferences. And he says, go and make what? Followers, disciples. Go and preach the good news, the gospel, Jesus Christ. It's really simple, yet profound, isn't it? That God would trust us, these weak vessels. But see, God knows that you've got something nobody else has. As a believer, as a born again, regenerated, born of water and the spirit. Come on. You've got an advantage. <laughs> What's the advantage? The living Life-giving spirit of God dwelling in you. Jesus says, I'm not going to leave you all alone. Disciples are all freaked out. Jesus, where are you going, man? We're just getting into this thing. Now you're telling us you're going back to your father? Jesus said, don't worry about it, man. You're going to be way better off. Because who the father is sending is going to be with you. Jesus says, I'm going to be with you till the end. <laughs> Hallelujah. He says, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. Oh, that's good news. You see, we're not following some kind of cause here. We're following a person. <laughs> Amen. Too much of what we do and and again, I have the liberty because I'm not pastoring right now and I come into a, a place where you don't really know me so I get a little bit of liberty to say things that might not get me an invitation back. But it's true that the church today really is more about this cause or that cause or this program and that program. You know, my friends, that's really how institutions work. <laughs> We're not an institution, can I just say that? We're a body with many members, with different functions. Hallelujah. My brother's here. You're a member, the body of Christ with different functions that the Holy Spirit has given you by grace. Everything that we do is by grace. And not about my gifting. I'll tell you what, man. I got nothing to offer. <laughs> I got nothing to give by what I've already only received by grace. Each one of us. That's why we honor one another. Because what you've got, I need. Because <laughs> the Holy Spirit's deposited something in you that I need to be encouraged by. You see, if we can get it right as the church, I'll tell you what. The church can be the most mobilized, transforming of this ch culture and generation that we've ever seen. If we can get it together and understand that actually each one of us we are anointed by the Holy Spirit. <laughs> That's grace. That's grace. Man, we get so much caught up in who's on the platform. If I can only get to the platform and get a microphone, I tell you, you have so much influence in your life, in your workplace. I work in maintenance for a, non, uh, uh, for a uh, affordable housing company, nonprofit. And I get to go into the homes of people that are, a lot of people that are in need. And I'll tell you what, when I go in, I just say, thank you, Lord Jesus. I am bringing in your peace into this house. Your shalom. You know, shalom destroys chaos. And there's a lot of chaos out there. <laughs> and I'll tell you what, you carry the prince of peace within you. And you walk into a situation, you can say, if you want to say it under your breath, go ahead. Say it in your car before you go in. But thank you, Lord, that I am bringing in the Prince of Peace with me. And you will destroy chaos in this environment. Whether it be your workplace, whether it be your school, even in your home. If there's chaos, you say, thank you, Jesus. You are the Prince of Peace. And I carry around with me. Peace that destroys chaos. Hallelujah. Oh, I get a little excited sometimes. 
Paul said, and he encouraged the early church, Corinth. Do you know Corinth historically, you know, at its height was probably about 80 people. And we think, man, if I got a mega church, I've got it all. Man, if I could just get everybody in one room, I think we can transform Elmer. It's not what it's about. <laughs> it's about, Paul is saying, listen, each one of you carry something. Each one of you has the grace of God resting on your life. Begin to function as a body. You know what? If I, if I were to, uh, I cut my hand really bad. Uh, how many months ago? It's been a few months now. June, I think it was. And I cut my uh, tendon. I didn't cut it, didn't clear off, but I cut into it. And uh, I was just so thankful, man, that I didn't cut my finger off. But you know that if you were to cut a, a, a finger off, you only got minutes <laughs> for it to actually be reattached or what happens, it dies. We have so many believers out there that aren't plugged in, aren't attached to the body of Christ. Thinking that I can just do church on my own or I can do it online. And I, I'm sorry again if I offend. I try not to, but I have that anointing to offend people. But you got to be plugged into the body. <laughs> Why? Well, the word tells us in Ephesians 4... We've got these amazing gifts that Jesus has given to men, apostles and prophets, evangelists, pastors, teachers. That's not all of them. That's, that's a listing of those. And for why? To edify, to build up, strengthen. But I'll tell you, we've got to be plugged in together. It's the reason why the church for centuries gathered, come together. Why? Because it's where the presence of Jesus dwells by the Holy Spirit. Come on. He dwells. Listen, I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not saying that we're not each temples, but read the scripture. Read the Bible. Paul talks about it. Peter talks about it. It's those living stones coming together, being pit, fit together to be what? The dwelling place. There's a greater measure of grace and glory when believers come together and gather. His presence is magnified. Hallelujah. Praise God, I can pray with my wife and I can encounter Jesus. Praise God that I can pray in my closet and I can encounter Jesus. But there's a measure of glory and anointing that I can't attain to unless I come together with other believers. And it's awesome and I need it. Jesus knew I needed it. But I tell you what, as we're admonished in scriptures, don't forsake the gathering together. Even more so as you see the day approaching. Man, do you see the day approaching? Take a look around, church. Come on. <laughs> the day's approaching. Don't forsake. That's for somebody. I don't know. Maybe you're watching online right now. Forgive me if you're offended, but don't be offended if I can say that. Get to church. Get together with other believers. Understand the purpose and the reason why it's so important. How am I doing for time? Okay. You can shut me down any time. I'm just, you let me know. I'm tired now. I got to go home, pastor. Shut up. <laughs> the early church, and, and you know this, if you read scriptures, they were known as followers of the way. Amen. Followers of the way. What way were they following? Shout it out. Jesus. We, we, under, we understand the concept, right? It's like Jesus says, I am. You know, in, in John's gospel, I can't remember how many times, I think it's at least seven times Jesus makes that pronouncement, I am. And one of the greatest pronouncements, I am the way. I am the truth. I am the life. He says, I am the resurrection and the life. There's a way of Jesus, not just the way of Jesus to the Father, but there's a way of Jesus as we follow him as our mentor, as we're apprenticed, discipled by him. We can look and see how did Jesus live his life. <laughs> 
He had a rhythm. You know, I, I, I'm going to share this. This is kind of a cool little thing because it, it kind of left me off the hook, let me off the hook a little bit. Um, I had to go through a couple years ago. I went through burnout in ministry and I realized, man, I am such a performer. Oh, I got to break that off of me. He's not, Jesus isn't looking for performers. <laughs> you know, there was a fear of man on me that I didn't realize was there. And I was doing things out of that motivation that was driving me as a drivenness in ministry and realizing I wasn't depending upon Holy Spirit. I was doing so much in my own strength that it literally burnt me out. I mean, there's other stuff too. I had people that almost felt like they wanted to kill me. I would say, I'm not the Antichrist. Why are you so against me? But that happens in the church and it shouldn't happen. We shouldn't be pit against one another. <laughs> do we make mistakes? Sometimes we do. Do we offend? Sometimes we do. But what are we supposed to do if we're offended? We forgive. But as I was going through this time and through this season, and I was understanding, I started to research and I started to, to really lean into to Jesus and see, Jesus, you have such an amazing rhythm. You never stressed out. You never lost it. You weren't driven. Why? Because he was only doing what he was seeing his father doing. He wasn't motivated by himself. He wasn't motivated by self-promotion or trying to be somebody. It was only doing what the father was telling him to do. It's called obedience. Simple obedience. And as I begin to learn these things, I understand, oh, there's rhythm here. There's, there's, there's things that, Jesus, that you practiced that you did. Some of you might notice I have a rosary. I'm not Catholic, and I don't pray to Mary, but I'm kind of a little bit ADD, so I need a little bit of focus. So sometimes and I'll take, I'll take my rosary here, and I'll pray Scripture. So I want to memorize Scripture. Whatever helps you. You know, there's some great traditions. If you're offended by Catholics, don't, because they're your brothers and sisters. There's many born-again, spirit-filled Catholics. This isn't here to offend anybody. It's just here for me a reminder that, Jesus, I need you. <laughs> Whatever it takes, okay? Whatever you need, man. It's Holy Spirit will show you. It's not about following some kind of practice or ritual. Because you can be very ritualistic. And Jesus said, don't do that. Don't be repetitive in your prayers. Don't babble like the pagans. <laughs> Go in and close the door. Be with your father. You know, we live in a culture. It's like, look at me. Jesus said, don't look at me. said, don't get, draw attention to yourself. Go into your closet. Go into your prayer room. and Your father will reward you there. If you're giving, don't let it be seen. Like the Pharisees, they look at me, I'm giving. No, give in secret so that the father will reward you. We're the opposite in this culture. Look at me. If you don't believe me, just go on Facebook. You see how many people are saying, look at me. <laughs> I'm not slamming Facebook. If you're on Facebook, it's cool. It's okay. Because the way of Jesus, honestly, is, it's, 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 it's not a theology, <laughs> not meaning just simply believing right, although we want to believe right. It's not just about ethics. It's not a list of do's and don'ts. It's that, but it's much more. It's what it sounds like. It's a way of life. We've chosen a way of life. It's modeled by Jesus. I'm going to give you a scripture, Matthew 7, 13. Enter through the narrow gate. For the gate's wide and the way is broad that leads to destruction. There are many who enter through it. The gate is narrow. Say narrow. The way is constricted. Say constricted. That leads to life. There are few who find it. You know, I had to repent recently, and this is just a it's good always to confess. I had to repent recently because, you know, when I through my life, and I've been a Christian many, many years, you know, I, I think I've sometimes made it too easy for people. I haven't actually given them the truth. I give them part of the gospel. I've talked about the life you can have in Christ, the resurrection life, eternal life, but I didn't tell them to count the cost. Jesus was pretty clear with the young rich ruler, it's going to cost you something to actually follow me. There's a great reward in it, but listen, <laughs> there's some things you're going to have to give up. <laughs> the main thing we got to give up is our own way because we're now following his way. Amen? Does that make sense? It's a narrow gate. I, I once 
a few years ago, many years ago, I guess now. When you get old, the years just kind of, I don't know, they all blur together. So I don't know how many years ago it was. It was a while. I was in, in Ottawa, actually, at the time. And I had this really profound dream. And there are times when you have a dream and you know uh, it's probably what I ate earlier. I had that dream. And there's other times when you wake up and you know God's trying to get your attention. You know it's, it's Holy Spirit witnessing to your spirit. Something I want you to pay attention to, son. I want something you to notice. And I had this really profound dream. And I was in this dream. I was traveling on this, this road. And all of a sudden I came to a crossroad. And this crossroad, it was, I could only go right or I could go left. And to the right was this really amazing, uh, paved, freshly paved road. I could see literally for miles. It's kind of like if you've ever driven through the prairies of Canada, it's like, does this road ever end? Because I can see for miles because it's so flat. And it was, it was this really beautiful road actually it was really cool and and at that moment I was looking at it it's like I knew the Lord was with me and he said that's the road that many choose because it's easy to travel on there's no obstacles you can pretty much navigate it on your own you don't need anybody to direct you or lead you because you just keep going on it you just follow along that way and then I looked to my left and I saw this, I could only see really actually, it was a narrow little path, like a dirt path. And it, I could only see a little ways because it made a really sharp left around this cliff. And over the side was this, I mean, I mean cliff. Like, I mean, it was a drop off, like it was a Grand Canyon, man. But I could see down further, the road was windy going down like this and all around. And I could see all these boulders and trees over top of this path and and the Lord says to me you can choose that path but you can't navigate it on your own you need me to navigate that path in my dream I was like game on let's go I want that one <laughs> I don't want that broad path that's easy to navigate I want the one where I need you Jesus to lead me along the way because I'm going to hit boulders in life. There's going to be trees that fall across my path. But I'm going to need somebody to help me navigate through that. Anybody here whose feet touch the earth, you've never faced any boulders in life. You've never faced any controversies. You've never faced any obstacles. Not a hand goes up because every one of us as human beings, our feet touch the earth and we hit things. We have losses, we have disappointments, we have gains, and we have victories. But through it all, we have one that is with us who said, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. No matter what you go through, even when you go through, pardon my language, crappy stuff in life. My word, the word that God has given me in his promise that is yes in Christ Jesus is no matter what I go through, he will turn it into good. <laughs> come on hallelujah he'll work all things together for my good why because he loves me and i love him hallelujah let that be encouragement to anybody that's going through a painful time i know it is hard it's called the dark night of the soul i've been through it if you've never suffered burnout you don't really know you maybe read about it but when you're curled up on the floor crying like a little baby as a grown man trying to figure out why can't I control my emotions, you start to understand that we're frail human beings. And we need someone who will give us strength. We need someone that we can look to in all situations and say, Jesus, now I need you to be real to me. I need you to be the perfecter of my faith because my faith is rock bottom right now. And I'll tell you, when you look to him, he will increase your vision to see things in a way you've never seen them before. In our frailty of human beings, we only see the boulder. God sees the bigger picture. He sees the overcomer 
that will be when you grab the hand of your father and he leads you through. Amen? Amen. I think I've preached enough. I think I've said enough. Amen? You guys are awesome. As I asked the Lord this week, what, what do you want me to bring? It's like, there's lots of stuff, man. I got, I got tons of, this is, I, I don't want to sound arrogant here, so I'm not being arrogant here. But I've got lots of messages. I've preached for, like I say, 20 years. So I could have pulled anything in my back pocket. And I said, Lord, what do you want to say to the church in Elmer? Elmer full gospel. And I know that I know that I know the Lord deposits in my heart. Tell him to come and follow me. <laughs> For I am with them. I've not left them. And I'll never forsake them. But I'm with them always to the end of the age. I don't know what part of the journey that you're on in your followership of Jesus. It doesn't matter whether you follow Jesus for a day or 50 years. He's still the same. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. He's unchanging, unshakable. Even though we go through times of shaking, he's unshakable. He's the one that stands up in the storm and stills the wind, quiets the wind and stills the waves. Peace be still. He's the one that heals when you reach out to touch the hem of his garment. If I can only reach out and touch him, I know that I'll be healed. He hasn't changed. He's still the one that sets free from bondage. You're caught in that place. You just seem like you can't get out. You're in that place where you just you cried out to God and said, God, can't get over this thing. I keep happening. It's happening and happening over and over again. I want to encourage you this morning. Set your eyes upon Jesus, the author and the finisher of your faith. Allow the words of Jesus penetrate the core of your being. That who the sun sets free is free indeed. I declare that over you this morning. You're struggling in an area of your life. I speak that over with the power and conviction of the Holy Spirit. Who the sun sets free is free indeed. Step out into freedom in Jesus' name. Come out into the place of freedom in Jesus' name. Come out and take off those grave clothes in Jesus' name. We know that sin leads to death. The wages of sin is death. But come on, Jesus is the author of life, <laughs> the resurrection and the power. Turn to him this morning. Confess. He's faithful. Cleanse you from all unrighteousness. Jesus, I thank you right now for this body of believers. I thank you for every member of your body in this house and all the function, the gifts, the spirit, Holy Spirit brings in the midst of this house. I thank you for every gift that's been given. I thank you for the functioning together. I thank you for the unity that you bring Blessed Holy Spirit, I thank you for the life, vitality in this house. That you planted this house to be a lighthouse for this community. I thank you, Lord, that it will be a lighthouse. It'll be a light to this community in Jesus' name. I thank you, Lord God, for the deposit of your love into every heart by your Holy Spirit, that you've deposited that 
I thank you in Jesus' name for the peace that passes understanding for every person in this house that guards hearts and minds in Jesus' mighty name. I thank you, Lord, for this house and what you're doing. And Lord, I join in with heaven, Lord God, to look and discern what you're doing so that I can join in too and I can bless in the name of Jesus what you're doing in this house. Amen and amen. Bless you. I don't know how you wrap up. Maybe you got more you need to do, but I guess I'm done. <laughs> bless you guys. Thank you so much for listening to me. Thank you for the invitation. Uh, you know, Pastor Nathan for in, in, inviting me to come and minister this morning and I'm so thankful for you guys and, and keep us in prayer too, my wife and I, as, as we go along this journey too and are discerning what the Lord is leading us into, what's next upon this path that we're following this way with Jesus. God bless you. Thank you.